So, label free biosensors have revolutionized our ability to look at protein protein and protein other biomolecular interactions in label free manner essentially in the real time with very very high throughput. There are different technologies which are uh, which have started showing its promises. We have discussed about SPR or surface plasma resonance. Another promising technology is BLI or bilayer interferometry. The kinetic analysis of antibodies and other proteins is critical to the characterization of molecules. In today's lecture, Mr. Sushil Vaidya, an application scientist of Paul Bioforte, will use bilayer interferometry or BLI technique to perform the kinetic interaction between the mouse monoclonal antibody and protein A. Here the protein A will be immobilized on a matrix at the tip of a fiber optic sensor. The binding between the immobilized ligand and the analyte for example, the mouse monoclonal antibody will produce a change in the optical thickness at the tip and resulting in the wavelength shift which will be proportional to the binding. The data acquisition and data analysis will also be demonstrated by determination of interaction kinetics between the ligand and the analyte. So, let us start this demonstration session and today's lecture. Uh, myself Sushilendra Vaidya, application specialist for the Fortibio Paul Corporation. Just now in the last talk, uh, uh, Dr. Shengland Kao spoke about the bilayer interferometry and the applications. Now I am going to demonstrate how this bilayer interferometry works. Now I am going to demonstrate the uh, kinetic studies of the monoclonal antibodies that is the most monoclonal antibody to the protein A ligand. This is the Paul Fortibio Octate Red 96 instruments. If you look at inside, this is we call it as the optical head box. The optical head box consists of a spectrophotometer as well as the channels or we call it as a manifold. This is 8 channel manifold, so it can take up the 8 sensors. So, here if you look at this is the sensor compartment, this is we call it as a sample compartment. Now you can see this, this is we call it as a sensor holder or sensor manifold. So here we can put it this sensor in this fashion and then we can put it this as a sample. So this is the 96 well plate format, we can analyze 96 sample in one goal. If you look at this. This is works on the principle of the dependent rate as well as the bilayer interferometry. You know about the principle behind the bilayer interferometry in the last talk. Uh, here it consists of a white light as if you look at here this is called as a white light you can able to see here. This is the uh, light emitting diode. We are passing the light emitting diode the light pass through the sensor. If you look at this, this is the sensor. it is actually made up of the gl glass it consists of a fiber optic inside and and the end at the holder part this is made up of the the plastic so inside there is a fiber optic at the tip of the sensor we are putting ligand of our interest so we are passing a white light light get reflected back it is a reflection based phenomenon one light which is coming from the internal optical layer another light which is coming from the ligand end so, when there is an interaction between the two binding partners say suppose I am coating with a kind of a matrix it is a protein A. When you dip into the, uh, the sensor into the corresponding uh, uh, binding partner example like monoclonal antibody when human IgG starts binding to the protein A matrix as you know that it is a concentration dependent as the more molecule starts binding to the protein A matrix then we can able to see there is a change in the spectrum or I, I mean to say it is a like a change in the wavelength. So the change in the wavelength is nothing but the as the concentration increases the change in the wavelength it is corresponds to the optical thickness. The more the optical thickness as we can see as the change in the wavelength 
it, it, it indicates that the more the molecules are binding. So from this we can able to uh, like determine the concentration. This instrument we even we can useful for the quantification purpose. Say suppose in case of the industry or any uh, protein if you want to do a quantification uh, directly we can take a uh, known concentration of the standards, we can generate a standard curve and from uh, we can able to determine the unknown concentrations. Uh, apart from that the, the major useful of this instrument is to study the binding kinetics where we will determine the rate constants like uh, on rate, off rate as well as the affinity constants. I am going to demonstrate you kinetics interaction of the most monoclonal antibody to the protein A ligand. Here I am using biotinylated protein A as a ligand at the concentration I am using a 10 microgram per ml. 10 microgram per ml I am putting into the 6 wells and mo most monoclonal antibody I am using as an analyte. Here I am taking the starting concentration at, at a 25 microgram per ml. I am going to do a serial dilution with a two fold uh, from 25 to 12.5 then then serially I go for a uh, two fold concentration ar around 6 data points. Um, this is the plate map here, this is the buffer the first column and the second column I am going to put the bio 10 microgram per ml concentration of a uh, biotinylated protein A and the third column I am going to a buffer it, 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 uh, it will be useful as a for an unborn biotinylated protein A get, get washed off here and also this well I am going to use for, for the dissociation purpose. And the last well I am going to put the analyte that is a 25 microgram per ml serially diluted in a all these 6 wells. This is the sample plate 96 well plate I am going to place in the sample compartment here like this there is a click sound it will come firmly it fits into the sample compartment. Here the sample compartment if you look at it works on the dip and read the BLA technology works on the dip and read method uh, here we do not have a like a any microfluidics devices. So to assist for a binding we have a like a shaker that shaker assists in the binding. Uh, the shakers works from 150 rpm to 1500 rpm and also the sample plate have a like uh, uh, there is a temperature we can work from the ambient uh, uh, room temperature like 20, uh, 23 plus 4 degree to the 40 degree centigrade. So here I am going to place the sensor compartment. So we can from we pick up the sensors from the either column 1, column 2 or column 3 like uh, uh, anywhere uh, we can make it program according to the in the instrument. We have placing the sensor rack like this. If you look at this in the in the software there is a we have a in a uh, 40 bio platform the BLR technology we have a acquisition software as well as the uh, data analysis software. Now I will show you the acquisition software what are all the features it have if I double click on this instrument starts initializing if you look at it is it moves in the XYZ direction itself it initializes okay now you can see that uh, there is an initialization process is going on. It takes a roughly around 30 seconds of time. So you can see in the software what the event is happening on the on the, uh, the, the dialog, dialog box open. Now it is showing that the instrument status it is ready. So now we can start the experiments. When there is a uh, acquisition software open we can see there is a experimental wizard here. So here in the wizard we can see there is a two major experiments whether you want to do a kinetics experiments or the quantitation experiments. Now we are going to perform the kinetics experiments I will go here clicking on the this green arrow mark. So if you look at this there is a page get opened here if you see on your left hand side there is a 96 well plate design this is what we call it as a plate design we have to mention in the plate design what things we had put it. So I had mentioned we had put a like a lig biotinylated ligand buffers as well as the uh, the two fold dilutions of the different two fold dilution concentration of the uh, uh, most monoclonal antibody. Now we have to mention where all these things we had put into the 96 well plate. So I had put a in the 96 well plate here this column I put it as a buffer I will right click it here right click I am showing this as a buffer here second column I had put a biotinylated ligand that we call it as a load. Load is nothing but we are performing the the biotinylated protein A immobilization step we are performing on the streptiodine sensor. Now the third column I had put here 
this one as a buffer once again unbound material get washed off here now we have to put analyte we call it as a sample. So these are uh, the sample IDs we have to mention what we had put it here we can put it this here just like a buffer. So what I will do is just I will take I will copy it then buffer and, and once again here I had put a once again there is a buffer here I put a protein A as a ligand here as I mentioned the buffer we can use any kind of buffer now in this experiment I am using a, a PBS buffer having a additive like a BSA it is a 0.1 percent BSA as well as it having a like a surfactant like a 0 0.02 percent of the twin 20. So this uh, this composition P, uh, in a PBS at the pH 7.2. So I am I'm, I'm here I am mentioning the uh, most monoclonal antibody uh, I will use M small g capital G M I G G okay I am using a 25 microgram per ml and the molecular weight of the most monoclonal antibody is a 150 kilo Dalton it is automatically calculates it is a 166.7 nanomolar okay just I will copy this one what I will do I will I will select this such well data then it is a 25 divided by 2 then automatically last one I am put it as a 0 concentration these are the concentrations 25, 12.5, 6.25, 3.125, 1.56 and 0 0.7 corresponding nanomolar concentration. Now we have in the there is one more step we call it as assay definition. So these are the sum of the steps I am going to add here there is a baseline by default baseline just acquires the, uh, the buffer now we are going uh, next step we call it as a loading. Loading is nothing but we are immobilizing a 10 microgram per ml protein A onto the streptavidine sensor. So I am going to add here then next step I am performing the baseline and I will say it as a ok then our instrument says that already there is a one more first already we have a baseline there is a exist it is saying do you need a one more yes I need one more I will say ok then I will add one more step we call it as association steps we call it ok then second we call it as a dissociation step ok. Now we have to tell instrument what is the first step this is the first step baseline I am going here I am double click on that this is the first step we call it as a baseline step the second step we call it as a immobilization protein A immobilized biotinylated protein A immobilization onto the streptavidine sensor I will double click on this then the third step baseline once again unbound material get washed off here just I am clicking on this next step is the association step this is the sample this is the most monoclonal antibodies two fold diluted six data points then the dissociation step I am performing a uh, same buffer that is the column 4 okay these are the steps what sense what type of sensors we are using I am using a streptavidin sensor now we have to say for an instrument how much time each step has to be acquired the first step I require around 30 seconds and the second step it is require around once again the 30 seconds third step it is good to have 60 seconds uh, association I will perform for a 150 seconds and the dissociation I will perform for around 200 seconds this is uh, uh, the for this experiments these are the conditions we already pre optimize. So for this uh, it is well established I am performing and here I am performing the shake speed at the 1000 rpm if you look at the total time it is roughly around uh, 9 minutes and now we have to say in the in the sensor compartment from where the sensor has to be picked up now I had put a sensor somewhere here at the third column in the sensor compartment if you look at the next step review experiment in the review it is like that your sensor is picking from the third column then the first step will be your baseline second step where is loading third step your baseline and the fourth step your association then the fifth step your baseline so run experiment then where exactly want to store the data here I am going to store the data in the desktop have a IIT demo I am creating this folder okay 
whenever you are performing the experiment sensors has to be hydrate uh, prior to the experiment at least 10 minutes it is required for the hydration. Say so suppose uh, your sensors are not hydrated we can say in the software delay 600 seconds, 600 uh, seconds is nothing but a 10 minutes after the hydration the sensors uh, the instrument starts acquisition. In second option is like that during the uh, uh, the hydration whether your sample has to be in the shaking conditions because the uh, instrument have a shaker it will during the uh, it effectively mix in some cases uh, it is required some cases not uh, you know that sh shaking sometimes enhances the aggregation. So we can uncheck this and also I think uh, prior to the experiment we already started a hydration of the sensors now sensors got hydrate we can directly uncheck this we can go for the experiment and sample plate temperature it is uh, at the 30 degree uh, so already it is stabilized the plate we can now go for the experiment. Uh, here if you look at this I, uh, I opened the door for the demonstration purpose in all the cases uh, we have to close this door uh, because stray lights affects the interactions. Now for the demonstration purpose I am, I am keep opening the door I will say go. Sensor is picking from here from the sensor rack it is now it is going to the sample plate sample plate if you look at now there is a shaker which is uh, working at the uh, 1000 rpm. So you can you, you could able to see there is a uh, uh, as when it dips into the uh, sample compartment you see there is a signal. So now this signal we are acquiring for the 30 seconds the, the first step we call it as a baseline. Now it is going to a next compart next column it is consists of a biotinylated protein A 10 microgram per ml. Now we can able to see there is a rise in the signal this is what we call it as the immobilization step uh, the biotinylated protein A is uh, binding to the, uh, the streptavidin sensor. Now that is we are acquiring for around roughly a uh, 30 seconds time. Uh, and it is uh, around uh, in, in uh, less than 20 seconds we can able to see it is uh, reaching to the 1 nanometer uh, the binding we are measuring in terms of the nanometer here this is a good enough loading for to get the interaction studies. Now the uh, uh, moving to the next column where there is a buffer PBS buffer unbound material get washed off and, and uh, this steps is required for the to get a stabilized baseline the baseline is now stabilized. Uh, we can go from from here uh, we can say ok it is automatically goes to the next step 30 seconds. Now the uh, sensors are moving to the association step now here there is a biotinylated protein A interacting to your most micro antibody uh, it is a, like a two fold different concentrations if you look at this the graphs this is a how the curves are. Uh, uh, two fold dilutions this is the highest concentrations this is the second fold this is third fold this is fourth fold one at the, the bottom I had put the zero concentration. So in a software we have a, a function like that we can extend the current step as well as if you want uh, like it is already like a saturated we can go to the next step. I will say go to next step 100 seconds is good. the sensors went back to the, the buffer well where exactly if there is a interactions happening if it is a loosely bound kind of interactions just get come out from the sensor if it is a very strong then you can able to see there is a still kind of a straight line here. So if it is a straight line then it indicates that uh, it is a very strong binding once the dissociation step performed the sensors once again re rack back to the sensor tray. And, and and the instrument the robotic arm move to its original position. So now acquisition done now we have to go for the data analysis. There is a data analysis software I am going to double click on the data analysis software in the bottom of this uh, where exactly you have a, a data uh, uh, so IIT B demo I will I will go with this kinetics demo I have a folder here this I am double click on this if you see that there is a page got opened I will go to processing here in the processing tab we will see this the raw data 
So what we are doing is we are subtracting. I had like a one of the column I had put a zero concentration. This column I will change, change to the reference well. This is what I'm zero concentration because some of the artifacts from the buffer we can subtract from the data. So that's why I'm going for the reference subtractions. On the on the left hand side there is a uh, uh, here we have an icon subtraction. We have different types of the subtraction systems. So I'm using here one of the just only a zero constant. I'm using for the subtraction. So reference well I'm going for that. Uh, in the raw data I will go that. Uh, I will select this association step. Then there is a y uh, align y axis. I'm going to do a baseline. This is the baseline step for this particular baseline. I'm going to align. Now I have to go for the process data. So if you look at now the data what we got. This is what the process data. Now we have to go for the analysis. Analysis there are the six data points we have here. In the analysis part we have association only, dissociation only, association and the dissociation. For to calculate the rate constants we have to go always choose the association and the dissociation. We have a different binding models like 1 is to 1, 2 is to 1 for the heterogeneous ligand. Uh, mass transport effect if there is any mass transport involved in the uh, interaction studies. We have a bivalent analyte 1 is to 2 binding model. Depletion studies, yes. So local in the fitting model, apart from the what kind of model, we have a like another kind of a fitting. It is a local fitting as well as global fitting. The most of the times when you are performing for the uh, uh, interaction studies, we always uh, go with a global fitting. So now I have to choose a global fitting. Global fitting with respect to color and the R max unlinked by a sensor. To perform a global fitting, we have to select all the samples change to a one color so I will change to a blue color now you can see this now is a one is to one binding model I have to try use entire step systems I have to fit the curve so now fitting is okay and the KD it is showing that around a 17 nano mole easily we can able to see the good fits uh, uh, through the uh, 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 with respect to the uh, chi square values as well as the r square values if you look at in this table uh, uh, we have a like a what is the kd the kd errors k on with the k on errors and if you look at the uh, the good fits it is a uh, always when in case of the kinetics the good fit comes uh, it is a 0 0.5 and 0 0.95 above and also chi square should be less than 3 so from this uh, indicating that it's it's behaves a one is to one binding model uh, uh, it is a, a it is supported by a your r square as well as the chi square a statistical parameters also we have a, a graphs like xy graph iso affinity graphs as well as the steady state uh, because in this experiments we not reach the steady states uh, we not able to like uh, uh, calculate the steady states but still software can pick up and, and the KD value it is determining it is around a 2.1 uh, nanomolar and also uh, uh, here also if you look at this is around roughly a 1.7 nanomolar uh, it is almost like a, a similar very near to those values yes it is a good fit and, and, and we can export this uh, the, uh, the into a printed versions like a making a report uh, here we have to say save report then then say export we can take like a kind of a excel sheet what the parameters I had used for that experimental summary the sensor tray where exactly we had put a sensors the sensor data what sensor we had used sample data how your sample plate design is raw data you can see the raw data aligned data as well as the process data how this uh, sub, uh, we had subtracted using a reference well subtraction method the graphs the fitted graphs uh, the residual view versus the uh, experimental view the blue ones which are the experimental red ones which are the theoretical in the results tables what is the where the sensor location sample id uh, the concentrations response what we got what is the kd kd errors so all entire details we can get it into the report now uh, we successfully demonstrated the protein protein interactions here with the protein a with the most small antibodies we used and and we got a very good data with the one is to one binding model with the affinity is around uh, 1.7 uh, nanomolar range so uh, with this i'm i'm, I'm concluding uh, uh, my uh, demonstrations
I hope you got a glimpse of how to perform these biomolecular interaction studies using biolayer interferometry platform. Today we have witnessed the application of BLI to measure the interaction between protein A and mouse monoclonal antibody. As demonstrated, the system monitored association of the analyte with the immobilized ligand and dissociation after moving the sensor to the solution without the binding partner. The changes in interference pattern were quantified and used to determine the kinetic rate of binding and dissociation. In the next lecture, we will demonstrate another application of bilayer interferometry based label free application for the quantification of proteins. Thank you.